Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, dear members of European University uh, alliances and representatives of external stakeholders. I'm very glad to greet you in the afternoon plenary session of the first TORCH annual open forum. My name is Ferenc Stako. I'm head of the CHARM EU Office of Directors Cabinet at Ötös Lorand University, ELTA, in Budapest, Hungary. And um, uh, I'm very glad uh, to introduce you uh, our afternoon uh, a panel session uh, that will be uh, an introduction of the open science practices of three European University alliances, CIVIS, Aurora, and CharmEU. Uh, the role of, of univers European University alliances in open science is crucial considering the fact that uh, in, the, in the next uh, year's related activities are going to are uh, going to be mainstreamed uh, also by different uh, initiatives of the European Commission, and I'm sure that uh, everybody uh, present in this session and all their institutions are working uh, very hard on uh, updating uh, their uh, open science agendas. And it is my great pleasure uh, to welcome here today and introduce you uh, Professor Balázs Acél, Vice Dean of Research and International Affairs at the Faculty of Education and Psychology uh, of Ötös Lorand University, and also the leader uh, of the Open Science Work Package uh, of the TORCH project. Uh, he is going to chair uh, this plenary session, and um, there is uh, nothing left uh, else than uh, wishing you a uh, very nice uh, experience and, uh, and learning opportunity now. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Greetings everyone, I'm Bola Jatil. I'm really grateful that you joined this final session of the TORCH annual uh, meeting. And I'm, I'm very sure that uh, you might be a bit tired uh, after uh, so many hours watching the screen and being uh, present in this online conference. It would be much more pleasant to be in the same place and uh, meet each other personally. But uh, I hope that this uh, final topic will be interesting for everyone and it will be a, an interesting uh, final discussion. So um, in this uh, session, first we will hear some about open science practices in uh, the CIVIS Aurora and the CHARM EU alliances. And uh, following that, we will have some more interactive discussion on some crucial and uh, current questions of open science. So to start the session, I'd like to ask Ignazi Lambastida to give a presentation on the open science involvement of the T TORCH project within the T CHARM EU Alliance. Uh, may I ask uh, the second presenter, uh, Mina Adobre, uh, of this session whether uh, it would be possible to switch uh, the first two presentations and, and start with the second one? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. So we can hear you, so please start your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, my name is Michna Dobre. Uh, I'm teaching and doing research at the University of Bucharest uh, in, in uh, history of philosophy and science, especially in the early modern period. But I'm also leading the discussion of the open science group in Rice for Civis, uh, which is in the SWAF uh, uh, project uh, of the Civis Alliance. Uh, so this is mm, about uh, the module five, mainstreaming of open science uh, in Rice for Civis. Uh, I'll say just a few words about the work that has been done in the open science group in Rice for Civis, uh, but I'll try to focus more on what is next. And I think this is uh, mm, a good way to start the discussion about uh, collaborative work on open science between uh, European university alliances. In Rise for Civis, uh, the SWAF uh, project provides a framework and a timeline to organize the activities of each module, including those related to open science. 
For example, the initial phase of the project was devoted to charting the open science landscape uh, in the CIVIS uh, universities. As expected, we discovered a large variety in terms of both open science policy adoption and local open science support. Most of the CIVIS universities are involved in European discussions about open science. However, the adoption of open science policies and frameworks is largely connected with the open science developments in each country. Uh, charting the open science landscape was done through uh, a LERU questionnaire, which was adapted to map the uh, eight main pillars of open science. This work was followed by a period of analysis and consensus uh, building upon what to do next. The open science group in Rise for Civis agreed upon two general goals for future actions. One, to raise the awareness of our academic community about open science uh, practices. And second, to increase collaboration on open science topics between our universities. These goals will be uh, pursued further by promoting uh, trainings on open science and by searching for a way to promote a recognition system of open science good practices. I want to conclude this brief intervention by adding two more general points for the discussion. First, policies are needed, but they are not sufficient. What is needed is a double action, bottom-up and top-down. The Open Science Group can attempt to work at the grassroots uh, level. So the planned actions would be to familiarize the community with open science practices, support open science infrastructures, and especially to offer trainings. In other words, to make open science as a service or knowledge base always available for researchers and for academic staff. Second, and the final point, related to some of the discussions in the morning panel, a global approach is needed in some areas, but most evidently in the discussions about research assessment reforms. We need a general transformation of the system of rewards and incentives at the international level. At the same time, within each of our institutions, we need to discuss this topic with other departments, for example, with uh, in, uh, human resources offices, to promote not only new ways of evaluation, but also to explain why and how we are going to do this. Only by expanding the conversation about open science, we can achieve the desired cultural change. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. So, so we improvise in this situation, not, not, not a problem. Uh, Mikhna, I really enjoy your presentation. I think it uh, brought a lot of insight and important keywords uh, were uh, mentioned. And um, we uh, collected a few questions that we will discuss it in this group. So I thought to proceed with the first one, which is how can the different universities and alliances support each other in uh, their open science activities? And I'd like to be interested in your uh, insights. You, you mentioned a few topics about, um, for example, global approach. And uh, in uh, the TORCH Alliance, we uh, realize that even within one university, different faculties have different approaches, different universities have different approaches and the alliances and so on. So um, it is uh, important that there is a, a bottom-up approach to open science, but uh, the top-down uh, I think is crucial as well, but also in the same time there sh should be uh, an interactive way on a horizontal level as well. So I'm, I'm interested to hear your opinion on this question. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think we should start from the last part of your uh, comment because uh, the most important aspect uh, is to support collaboration between various uh, institutions. 
uh, not only that uh, the open science landscape uh, is vast, but also the open science practices are currently being developed in different ways in our uh, institutions. Uh, contributing further to the diversification of open science practices. The most important part in developing open science is just to keep the conversation going and not to force institutions to take actions they are not prepared to implement yet. What is significant for one institution might be outdated uh, for uh, another. And this is why it's important to give space to grow and to encourage open science attitudes in all European universities. So to make trainings, webinars, uh, engage small group discussions through cross national organizations, but also to offer support, speakers, expertise, even small funding to host local events geared at the local academic community. Did, did you see uh, good examples for uh, these um, collaborations? I think a good example of collaboration is that uh, we are all discussing uh, about this topic and we are trying to figure out uh, what to do next in terms of uh, open science. Uh, because uh, the level is very different in each uh, in a university. Uh, in some universities, we have uh, uh, open science units. Uh, in, uh, in some others, we don't have uh, in, uh, in, uh, in personal working uh, in, on particular uh, in, uh, open science topics. Uh, some countries uh, have strong uh, uh, open science uh, uh, policies, uh, which are also implemented uh, in, in, within uh, the universities, while others are still discussing about uh, in, uh, in open science. So uh, uh, I think uh, we need uh, to offer uh, each uh, of these uh, uh, universities uh, sufficient space for discussion in order to uh, promote open science further. Um, and I think that's, that's quite fine uh, uh, in the sense that uh, for one university, uh, it, will, uh, it will be good uh, to have uh, finally uh, an open science policy, but uh, for uh, some others, uh, it's good to discuss uh, already about uh, reform uh, of the research assessment uh, and to do other things. In your view, uh, whose task would it be to, to organize these interactions? Would it be a national t uh, task or, or uh, should it uh, be more bottom-up approach and universities should reach out for each other or, or this is where uh, the EU alliances uh, would have crucial task? Well, I would go for uh, all of them <laughs> together uh, by saying that uh, it's important to, uh, uh, to figure out what are the needs uh, of each uh, university and to support uh, those uh, actions that are really needed for uh, uh, the academic community there. Uh, but uh, also it's good to receive support from uh, in, uh, in, uh, in large organizations uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, especially expertise uh, in, uh, to have uh, uh, trainings uh, on uh, open science. So in a way it's, uh, it's a community uh, based approach. It's not something that can be done only uh, uh, by uh, a top-down approach or only by uh, a bottom-up approach. Uh, we need to discuss at all levels and we need to engage uh, uh, with the current level of uh, uh, the discussion. I tend to agree, but I'd like to hear the other speaker's opinion as well. So I heard that uh, Roberto is available now. So. Uh, if possible, Roberto Della Donna, could you try to take over the floor? Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. 
um, I, I'm sorry that I came so late and that I wasn't able to attend the meeting uh, from this morning as um, because as I wrote, I had lessons before. I, I have prepared some slides, but I don't know if I have to answer to specific questions or if I can follow the slides. Start with your slides and then we could uh, have more discussion after that. Okay, perfect, yeah. Well, I think you should be able to, to see my slides and I'm not using a them as presentation, but in this other way. Let's try because sometimes on other, yeah, on other platforms, uh, they don't work properly. Uh, well, uh, I, I, I don't know if everyone already know what the Aurora Alliance is. Um, there are, it is a consortium of 10 European universities. Uh, deeply committed to the social impact of their academic excellence in educational research. You can read all the names on these slides. So um, we come from different countries, as you can see in Europe. Yeah. And um, so it is a transnational alliances of higher education institutions across the European Union aiming at a stronger and more integrated cooperation between European universities. They aim all our universities to establish European inter-university campus where students, staff and researchers can enjoy mobility to study, train, teach, research and work. Uh, program objectives, they are still very general, then I will talk more specifically about open science. Uh, equip a diverse student population with the skills and mindset to make them social entrepreneurs and innovators willing and able to tackle the major challenges of our societies. Uh, make collaboration with external stakeholders and students, regular practice in education, research and outreach at local, national, European and global levels. Lead by example and inspire others as pioneers in sustainability, reducing the footprint of our individual and collective activities and making substantial contributions to addressing the sustainable development goals. Uh, build an enduring and sustainable infrastructure to support the collaborative activities of the Alliance. The pilot domains, uh, sustainability and climate change, di uh, digital society and global citizenship, health and well-being, culture, diversity and identity. Um, we have different work packages. I will go very quickly now to the work package six, uh, sustainability and dissemination, uh, but I will leave the slides. So if someone um, will have some curiosity, uh, it is possible to answer. Uh, the work package six, sustainability and dissemination um, uh, is based on Aurora Alliance sustainability plan and dissemination plan. Um, more precisely, uh, there is this sharing and implementing open science practices. Lady City uh, is the University of Nepal, called is the Freie Universität in Amsterdam. Uh, the focus of the project is to achieve an understanding of best practices and policies on sharing of research infrastructure and resources, cooperation and entrepreneurial activity, empowering a human capital, mainstreaming open science and citizen engagement. engagement. 
Open science, as we all know very well, is the practice of science in such a way that others can collaborate and contribute, where research data, lab notes, and other research processes are freely available under terms that enable reuse, redistribution, and reprodu reproduction of the research and its underlying data and methods. The scope now is to fair and responsible research to use fair data, then public engagement and valorization, and of course, also as well, the fair education. There are all parts of these. Uh, what we plan, we have, so to say, also um, different um, objective. Um, and wanting to implement the practices, um, a shared knowledge based on open science resources, policies, and best practices, then open science training modules, open science function, function uh, to the uh, so, uh, SDG dashboard, open science community starter kit, and a platform for these communities to interact. Um, yeah, um, the objective are to uh, to build a shared knowledge base of for open science resources, policies, and practices, establishing joint training program on open access, creation of network of open science researchers, communities within and between Aurora institutions identification and solution to barriers identified for sharing our research infrastructures and for the development of a strategy for open science. Uh, more about the objective, open science makes use of the open educational data database that is part of the Aurora Alliance Erasmus Plus project, uh, stimulating students to take up an active role in social entrepreneurship and participating in research for society, mobilize research students, PhDs, and young researchers to become ambassadors for open science, encouraging open science to impact on the future synergies between Horizon Europe and Erasmus Plus programmes. Uh, more specific objectives, development of an Aurora support agenda for research and innovation, development of best practices for pooling research infrastructure, expertise, data, and resources, strengthen cooperation on entrepreneurial activity, and creating an Aurora innovation ecosystem. Uh, and so on, develop the capacity and capability of rural researchers and support staff, sharing best practices on open science, embedding citizens and social engagement further into our research activities, maximize impact to collaboration with other European universities. Uh, the idea is to, uh, to create bottom-up learning communities of researchers and students for learning and sharing about open science. Um, this work uh, package, this work package uh, just started um, and um, we, um, um, what, how we plan to realize what we have, um, what we, um, uh, we um, uh, we um, we have um, um, recognized as our uh, objective. Um, we will start with an Aurora uh, with um, an open science survey, um, a survey uh, on open science that are the practices, the actual practices of open science in Aurora universities with special attention to statutes, policies, publication of journals, of serious research data, adoption of open data, fair standards, 
um, then as the focus of uh, the uh, Aurora uh, Alliance's SDG. Um, if in the uh, open side, in the repository, um, open access repositories and other platform for uh, open science used in the in the in our universities are used specific keywords. Uh, then, if there exist strategies for open science training and open data stewardship, etc. Um, this is just a rapid uh, view to this um, to this survey with the different questions. I can't um, so show all of them, and um, of course um, there are already in all our universities some experience about this topic that we want to collect uh, just in in an in still very informal way, uh, we uh, collected uh, some information uh, to give some idea in general about what experience were already present in specific, in specific uni universities. This is just uh, an example for instance, the University of Innsbruck has already experiences, specific experiences in open access policy, in open access repository, open access pub, uh, publisher agreements, open access publishing funds, and so on. And we can see that some other experiences are in work of definition, are forthcoming. Um, so open science is for sure for the University of Innsbruck uh, a central focus of the university's uh, future digital uh, science strategies. And the same we can say for the uh, University Duisburg Essen. And um, uh, you, you, yes, we we can see here where some uh, experience especially are grounded. Um, I also added the experiences uh, uh, present in my university. Uh, they are, uh, these are just uh, three examples. Um, uh, of course, uh, similar experiences, uh, experiences are present in all the 10 universities that are present in, uh, that are part of the Aurora Alliance. Um, of course, these experiences are also different in focus, so to say. Some university develop more, so to say, experience in the domain of open access publishing uh, using specific platforms and so focusing more about dissemination of article or books in open access. Others, uh, to the experience of, uni, uh, of um, un, uh, open access university presses. Others have developed a uh, good experience in sharing of research data. So we plan to uh, put together these different uh, experiences to uh, learn from each other and also to work together to realize the a specific objective that we have uh, done. I hope I stay in 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 the time that uh, you uh, gave me, and thank you for paying attention. I will leave the, the slides, of course, and I'm ready to answer questions. That thank you, thank you, Roberto, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, there won't be technical difficulties to start. Uh, Ignazi Lambastida's presentation, and then we can have, have a little discussion about these issues. So, I Ignazi, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Axel. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share the, the slides, just a, a few a few slides, uh, just to to show you what we are what we are doing at the Charm Alliance, and especially through this Torch project. Uh, uh, you, you will see in a minute that we have done something similar that just Roberto has uh, told us because 
the, the first thing uh, we wanted to, to do when we start this project was to have uh, a look at what was the, the current situation of uh, in open science in our uh, institutions in our universities, the five universities, in relation to the eight pillars that were proposed as the eight pillars of the open science by the Commission. Uh, to, to know this situation, we took the uh, roadmap uh, developed years ago by the LIRU, the League of European Research Universities, since three of our institutions uh, belong also to, to this uh, group. And what we want, what the idea we follow was uh, to have a kind of traffic light survey. So, meaning we were asking questions in the eighth and the ninth pillar that I will show you in a moment, and to ask ourselves in which situation we are, but also showing uh, in, uh, the answers in a color scheme. So, meaning if you are ready for that or you have already a policy in place, you will be green. If you have not yet started, you will be red. And if you are ongoing, then you will have a, a orange or a yellow uh, answer. And I, I don't want to see to, to now point out who, who is who, because the, the idea of these uh, results that I want to share here and that will be shared as part of our deliverables from the project, is to see the diversity of situations where we start. And that's something that we were probably aware that not everyone in our uh, alliance starts from the same uh, point. And for instance, here, this is what uh, we call the ninth pillar, the, the needed change, a cultural change in our institutions, and also the need of leadership, we had different questions as, as, as Roberto, I'm not going to, to go through all the questions, but I wanted to show you here that there are some institutions where they have already all the answers in green, so they are really on a position ready to make this change to the open science. And other institutions where we have more yellows and reds, meaning that there are things that are already changing and things that have still to be discussed, for instance, in this play, in this uh, pillar, discussed at the, probably at the top level or to include some of this cultural change in some of the strategics or programs in our institution. We did the same uh, system for the eight pillars. I'm not going to show you now the the eight pillars answers because it doesn't make sense, I think, for this panel. But I want to show you the two differences. So the, the most different situation. This is the situation of education and skills where we see a lot of green. So probably we all are committed to get more training, to uh, get more uh, understanding. What it does this change means for our institutions? We have, we are all committed to train uh, our researchers, our leaders, our uh, staff on this change. So we have already programs in, in place. And this is probably the layer where we are more ready for open science. In the, op in the opposite side, we have the recognition and rewards. And I think we already heard about that this morning and we are seeing uh, that is uh, a real concern not just for us, for all the uh, European institutions, uh, not just universities, research centers, funders, etc. And probably these results show that this is the pillar where, where we need to work more, more and more. We took this picture, we made this uh, survey on the situation of our institutions uh, during the, the summer. We had the results and the final results uh, around uh, October and the next step that we were committed in the project to do was okay we we know where how we are we know which is the situation but we also want to know how we go ahead how we uh, work on going to the change on the open science and the second uh, deliverable that we commit in this project was to monitor this change and that's where we are now. We are building a kind of dashboard to see uh, in all these uh, different pillars, the different themes of the open science, how we can see 
is how we are changing. And this is a, an initial proposal where we plan to share a different open science dashboard, an open science dashboard for every institution where we want to follow the changes in the way we publish papers, uh, the way we share data sets, how the level of open access in the different definitions and the different flavors and different colors of open access are evolving in our institutions. But also we plan to share events, share training sessions. So going back to these eight pillars, not just to follow uh, the output, but also the behaviors and the practices towards open uh, science. So that's uh, an initial proposal of this dashboard, the, the group uh, the, uh, that is in this working package on open science are still discussing how we can gonna get the, the, the figures and the numbers and the information to build this dashboard. And also we are still discussing how we're gonna show all this information and we can share it with our colleagues. So that's, that's it. That's the, what I wanted to uh, share with you and to start the, the conversation. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Ignazi. And uh, I uh, think you, you can uh, stay with us with uh, reflecting on the first question that we already discussed with Michnea. So I, I repeat the question is, how, how can the different universities and alliances support each other in their open science activities? So what are your thoughts on it? I just uh, go in the order of the original uh, other present presenters, and uh, then I will be interested in the uh, thoughts on the same question from uh, Roberto de, de la Luna later. So, so Ignazi, uh, what, okay. what are your reflections here? Yes, I, I think uh, what uh, the best is like uh, to, the best way to, to go together is to, to share as much experiences as possible. Uh, how, uh, it's, 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 we, we must recognize that uh, we are different, we are in different contexts, so we, we can see what's going on in the Netherlands and we can be inspired. Maybe we cannot really do the same, but there are some initiatives that even you cannot really copy it exactly the same, you can get inspiration, you can get ideas, and I think it's uh, crucial to have this exchange of uh, initiative practices and also to see how the policies are evolving. I, I really like the, the slide from Roberto when he was showing the communities and he was showing especially these communities of practice in the Netherlands. I think almost every university in the Netherlands has this bottom-up community of open science practitioner. And it's, it's an idea that for a long time we were discussing in Barcelona to, to have something diff, uh, like this, but it's something that it's uh, as it is a bottom up it's nothing that you have to go to the top but maybe you can uh, try to impulse or try to to put together the people to to build this community so i think this sharing of idea is uh, crucial to uh, learn from each other thank, thank you and uh, um, i'm asking uh, roberto della donna the uh, same question of how can uh, universities and alliances support each other in their open science activities. What are yeah, your thoughts on I, I, I totally agree with, with Ignacy, of course. And this is very important to share experiences, um, to learn from each other. Um, as I said, um, we already noticed that uh, some universities are, so to say, more specialized in some aspect of open science, so they can uh, we can learn from them uh, as um, uh, as we can learn from other universities more about specific topics. Um, as, as as said, well, the, there is yeah the sharing of experiences, so to say, the minimum level of sharing. Um, um, it is also possible to share platforms as second level, uh, and um, and it would also be uh, a higher level of integration among the different universities' uh, infrastructures. Um, 
but um, yeah, um, there are also different levels of uh, knowledge already present in in the ten universities uh, who are that are involved in the Aurora Alliance. Uh, some have to uh, develop, so to say, more um, also the policy level, no? uh, the general policy level. Uh, and being together is also a good way to uh, reach a common level of experience. And from this common level, we uh, can all um, improve so to say ourselves and our experiences um, based on the fact that uh, of course um, we uh, we uh, operate we work in different contests and different contests can also have pursued you uh, to develop um, special uh, sectors, uh, publishing or more research data and less uh, university presses, for, for instance. No, uh, it, it, it depends on the contest very much. But in general, this sharing of experience can be helpful. This is what I have uh, in some way noticed. Um, but uh, as I said, we um, we didn't start to work together you know, for a long time. Uh, so we are at the beginning, even if we have already noticed that uh, some lines of developments are possible. Okay, thank, thank you very much. And maybe if I can uh, uh, share my reflections on that. Uh, I agree there is a great diversity in the level of knowledge and experience in, um, among the institutes and within the organizations as well. Uh, and uh, while it's very important to have, uh, give space to the bottom-up approach and, uh, and uh, little uh, local organizations should uh, be engaged in the reform, but uh, it's all very also important to see that uh, open science just won't happen by chance. It needs to have uh, facilitators, it needs to have encouragement, and needs to organize uh, events. For example, this one, which uh, can can be an effort, but it's important to be aware uh, the rule, uh, the role that uh, they play in uh, getting connected, knowing about each other, finding the um, points to um, reach out, and also discovering the diversity and dimensions of open science. I heard um, was mentioned, for example, educational database or open data stewardship or embedding citizen engagement. These are not, I think, the, the first thoughts uh, associated with open science, uh, often uh, neglected that uh, open science has uh, many pillars and, and uh, some of them are more in the focus than others. So uh, just um, being aware how many uh, different aspects open science has um, also a, a big benefit of, of interaction. So uh, I prepared my second question, which is uh, uh, what are the main limitations of introducing open science practices in research and student communities? So I would be interested in your thoughts, not just uh, perspectives of open science, but in practicalities of what limitations you, you um, experienced uh, when uh, you learned about the introduction or attempts to introduce open science practices, uh, your personal experience or any um, of your project's uh, output as, as understanding where the limitations are. I, I ask this question especially because I believe that it's important to be aware of these limitations and uh, be prepared and in, on institutional level and, and uh, government, uh, governance level 
uh, leadership should uh, be aware of these limitations and, and be prepared to, to um, um, divert these, these boundaries from the extension of open science. So, um, any, any of you would like to start the reflections on this question? I, 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 I can say something on the basis of my experience, yeah, so to say. Um, um, I would introduce some distinctions, so to say, uh, if we pay attention to the um, to um, the diffusion um, of open science in different uh, scientific communities, um, because there are different, there are a big difference between. Uh, bibliometric sectors, scientific sector, science, technology, and medicine, and not bibliometric sectors. And it depends also, of course, of the national um, assessment criteria. And, uh, well, it is in some way easier to uh, spread open science or an open science perspective on the basis of my experience in communities that are not um, in the uh, bibliometric sectors uh, for one reason uh, because it is easier to show the researchers who wants to publish and share the results of their research, uh, the opportunities, uh, the chances that they can have using platforms that you uh, may that you make available for them to publish in a very effective way. Uh, of course, it depends on on different nations how this works, but the assessment criteria that that not just the, uh, the scientific community, but also the assessment criteria, criteria that the um, uh, that that the ministeriums, the governments uh, adopt in different countries can be very influent. Uh, so I, I can just be, uh, speak about it on the basis, talk about it on the basis of my experience. That is, my experience is in Italy. And in, in Italy, um, um, this is what I noticed. In the SDM uh, sector, science, uh, technology, medicine, um, uh, to spread open science, you also need to intervene uh, financing in some way, open, uh, open, open, uh, open, um, open access publication. Uh, what has many consequences, so to say, uh, in the market of scientific communication? Uh, so there are some counter indication, there are some uh, not positive, so to say, consequences when you finance uh, publishing in open access with specific money that you put in the market and that, uh, of course, uh, be published or reduced. Um, and this is why I say that it is easier so to say, to, uh, to foster open science in not bibliometric sectors, uh, because the different stakeholders, so to say, are um, uh, at a more reachable level. I hope I, I have been clear enough and understandable in my, in my thoughts. Absolutely. Uh, I think it's a good complex issue when you uh, consider all the stakeholders, especially in, as you mentioned, in, in publishing, then uh, just uh, taking the perspective of one party won't uh, be sufficient to, to understand and, and solve the issue or, 
progress open science. Uh, so I'm uh, asking uh, if uh, uh, Ignazi, would you uh, share your thoughts on this limitation question? Yes, I, I fully agree on what uh, Roberto has said. Uh, of course, the, the motivations and the incentive must be clear. But uh, the problem, I think, is that every time you propose a change, it's difficult because we uh, tend to be opposite to the change. And, and I think what probably one of the limitations we have nowadays is that we need to have more stories, more an explanation, uh, a clear explanation on the benefits of open science. It's not just that you are obliged to publish in a uh, open access journal or you are obliged to share your data. It's something that we have to convince and to help the early adopters because I, I was just talking yesterday with a researcher and, and he said, you can choose me as an example. I'm ready to, to go for open science, but don't let me alone. So I think that's a, an important uh, thing to take into account. We need to support this change in an institutional way, if we really believe in that. It's not that it's a trend that we need to follow, it's something that we really care. We really want that science must be more collaborative, more transparent, more close to the society. If we believe that, we need, uh, we, we have to break this idea of, uh, we have to change the way, not just to see, well, I, I want a real incentive, I want to progress in my career. It's not, it's something else. But I think that's a, the, the current limitation. We don't exactly know how we can uh, get this idea uh, to, to change. It, th that's what we were saying, it's a cultural change. And, and this cultural change is, I think, the, the, main, the main limitation, the, the most important limitation that it's not easy to implement these changes. Absolutely. I mean, maybe uh, it jumps back to the uh, first question of how um, different um, organizations can help each other sharing experience. And uh, it uh, should be true on the question of limitations as well. So I'd like to move to our final question where I'll ask uh, everyone to just uh, share in very few uh, minutes uh, your thoughts on what sort of incentives were found to be effective in promoting open science among researchers? So can, can be your experience as a, as a researcher or in your institute or, or throughout your alliance activities? So, so what incentives are effective? Uh, who would like to start? I, I think we need to work on uh, uh, several levels. Um, you know, we need to explain uh, open science practices to the academic community at large and even to non-academic community. Uh, we also need to make it easy to pursue the open science route, uh, to raise awarenesses about uh, good practices, and also to change the reward system to take open science into account. So we need to work on the needs, but also uh, on uh, uh, the incentives, uh, which is precisely what we discussed so far. Yeah. Uh, Roberto, Ignazi, which one of you would like to add your thoughts? Okay, I, I, I can say something. Uh, well, it, it, it depends uh, on the on the on the level, so to say. I think that um, well, if you finance research, this is also an incentive. Yeah, a way to push a uh, um, researcher to publish in. Um, in in an uh, open access way and of course you can in same way also push researchers uh, asking them to uh, publish not just the final output of research but also the other 
uh, phases of research and of course the research data no and also to make transparent all the processes this is also the perspective that the funding uh, uh, agencies also in europe use and this is of course an incentive uh, and another uh, possibility uh, oh, better um, another uh, incentive that is very important is in the evaluation fine no uh, at the end uh, you can also evaluate uh, in or give some points in some way uh, to uh, the researcher or some rec uh, some recognition yeah? to the researcher uh, who published in open access and who made transparent the different the different steps uh, they went through out of course on the basis of my experience um, in Italy there are not yet uh, this um, uh, um, a specific evaluation on um, on the open science practices. No, the open science practices are not um, a point that can um, um, make the uh, uh, a research better evaluated that that uh, uh, then another research that uh, that didn't adopt open science practices uh, the incentive of uh, asking researcher to uh, publish in open access is mm, more uh, mm, more common is more used and uh, it works for sure uh, even if the other one would uh, and could and in other countries also in other countries also is used uh, but not yet uh, in Italy so long I know yeah thank thank you and and finally Nazi you... yes I, I think the main incentive is time uh, and what I mean is time uh, my experience is that uh, if you solve the, the problems to the researchers, they really appreciate. So for instance, uh, they are obliged to uh, publish in a repository because the funder, one or the other, is asking for that. So you, you need to, to show the researchers that there is a, an easy way uh, that they will not lose time to, for instance, self-archive a document. So that was, since many years ago, my main concern. I'm going to ask the researchers to follow the open science because I'm going to help them to do research in a more optimal way. Uh, what I what, what I am trying to do now with data is to show them that when they do a data management plan, it's not a, another burden, another bureaucracy. It's something that they will help. It will help them to help better research to uh, uh, preserve you, the data in a better way and to solve problems in advance and not at the end. So I think uh, this is the, the main incentive and, and we need to transmit this idea that doing open science, you can do science in an optimal way. You can save time. I know that now it seems, well, I need more things to do. I need to do a data management plan. I need to share my data, et cetera, et cetera. But we need to transmit this idea to say, no, but this is good for you. It's not that something is obliging to do that. It's something that it's better for you. And if you, if we commit to do this in an institutional way to help researchers on doing research, that's what they have to do, uh, and we provide them with the services, with infrastructure and the facilities to do that, I think then we will go into the right direction. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. If I may sh share my own reflections on the question of incentives, that uh, I uh, agree with everything mentioned uh, and extend that I believe that uh, the crucial part is uh, that uh, motivation should come also from inside. So uh, incentive should not be an external. Uh, only but uh, researchers should understand the importance of open science they should be um, they should 
um, think that they should understand uh, why it is uh, crucial to make changes in, in the practices, how they do research. But uh, it is uh, central for, for, from this aspect that the efficiency of their uh, activities, their, their research should not be decreased or uh, we have to make all the efforts to decrease the boundaries for uh, making the change and ha helping them to adopt uh, new practices. As you mentioned, uh, all the repositories and uh, data stewards, uh, services, trainings, workshops, webinars, they are all helping to make this change. We have to see that researchers are um, humans as anyone else. They like how they do things and they get used to certain habits and uh, to make uh, them change their uh, usual habits. We have to uh, have the very similar approach then for anyone else. We have to understand how they do things, why they do things, what uh, present incentives they have and uh, help them to decrease the boundaries and uh, increase the awareness of uh, their options and uh, collaborations in, in finding solutions to issues, but also to see how uh, reaching their goals in academia can uh, be more effective if they um, adopt open uh, science practices. This is not just a principle, this is an empirical fact that uh, uh, following open science practices can benefit researchers in, in many aspects, uh, citations, collaborations, uh, visibility, and, and so on, but also the uh, respect of the researcher can increase by um, um, being transparent and open about the, the basis of the claims or evidence that they uh, try to report. So I see that there is a crucial part that institutes can play here there when they have dedicated um, workforces that uh, uh, have the broad understanding of the aspects of open science practices and also uh, the, uh, they have the perspective of all, all the stakeholders, then uh, they can facilitate the whole process of uh, mainstreaming open science in uh, institutional level while uh, understanding the diversity of uh, r the research um, arena. So I'm um, looking at the organizers and uh, we, as we ran out of time, time a bit, uh, I'd like to give the floor to the organizers for closing remarks and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Atsil. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, we are we are a bit uh, run out of time, but uh, but it is just uh, just the best time as I uh, as I see that uh, the rector uh, of the University of uh, Barcelona, uh, Professor uh, Joan Guardia, almost just uh, just joined the session. We are very uh, very glad, uh, Rector. Uh, Garia, that you can be uh, with us today, and uh, I would like to give you the floor to uh, to greet uh, the participants and uh, and close uh, the event. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, please? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. I apologize for my delay, but I have in another meeting now, and uh, but. Uh, um, it's a pleasure for me to be to have the opportunity to to share with you this uh, brief uh, closing ceremony. So for us, Torch is a very specific, very special uh, project. is a, a key concept for us in the design of the uh, European Alliance and our work in collaboration with the rest of our partners. I want to uh, to to send a special. Um, a special remark to my uh, friend Laszlo. I hope that the rector of Ethle of Elte is uh, here also, and uh, it is uh, my pleasure to to send to Laszlo my special remarks. And um, the, the, the building of the the future in the universities uh, have uh, two or three special uh, highlights. 
in order to promote a new uh, framework, a new scenario in the next years in Europe. One of these special things is the possibility to generate a uh, robust alliance between universities. So our, uh, our for our work is the special key to develop another kind of uh, interpret the reality in Europe. Our work, our, um, our science, uh, our open science uh, define it as a, as a, a special remark in, in order to facilitate the access to the science and the knowledge is a guarantee of the future for the uh, Europe challenge. For this reason, uh, torch is a special key, is a key uh, first the relevant in order to build a new order in the universities in, in Europe. For this reason, for us, it's a special day today. And uh, for this reason also, I want to be uh, here with you only a few minutes in order to, to, to find this closing uh, ceremony. Um, there is another aspect I want to highlight now. So the science uh, is the only one way, is it only one vehicle that uh, define the possibility to um, the, the, the word exactly is to, to build a new community around the knowledge. Now in this moment that we are seeing a very dangerous situation, a very this situation very close to our house, very close to our reality, is the moment that the university needs to put in value our work, our force, in order to build a new order in Europe. The science and the knowledge is the only answer to the challenge and the opportunity to define a new way to interpret our community. And so, thanks to you for the uh, work, thanks to you of the disponibility and uh, collaboration between our universities. And our hope is to include more and more realities in a new Europe, in a new, uh, a new matrix of uh, joint work within the university. So from the University of Barcelona, from our reality, we want to collaborate with you in defining this new reality. Thank you very much to all of you, and I hope to see you very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this, these very uh, inspiring and, and, and very important uh, words. Uh, it is our great pleasure and honor to work in cooperation with our, uh, with our great partners in the Charm European University Alliance. And um, uh, my final uh, duty uh, at today's uh, event, the first uh, TORCH annual open forum, uh, is also to express our gratitude to all the participants, uh, speakers, and of course uh, the organizers, uh, the great uh, Barcelona uh, communications team and, uh, and our colleagues here at ELTA for, uh, for all their efforts and cooperation, and to remind all the participants uh, that uh, the presentations of the day will be available on YouTube, and also the materials of the conference uh, on the Charm EU website. So thank you very much again uh, for being with us today. Uh, we wish you uh, good uh, work on, on all, uh, all those uh, valuable uh, purposes, objectives uh, that uh, Rector Garia also mentioned. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a nice afternoon. Thanks. Bye. Thanks to you.